Okay, the never-ending puzzle simulator series um, continues. <laughs> the next puzzle that I decided to simulate is the square one. So, actually, it was actually surprisingly easy. It was actually surprisingly easy to simulate. Um, now this is this is another one of those puzzles like the clock that's not immediately obvious how it works. Um, so. First off, it's asymmetrical. Like yellow and white look like this, and then the other faces look like this. So it's asymmetrical like that. But okay, next up, you can turn the top and bottom. So and you can see it turns in twelfth turns like this, not in quarter turns like a normal puzzle. But the weirdest move you can do is the slash move. You can do it by just pressing slash. It literally sort of turns the right sort of half of it. And that's also what happens because we don't have a physical yeah. square one yet. Yeah. It's still at the Belgian customs, stuck there for two weeks already. And what does Simon do when he, he's waiting desperately for a cube? I make a simulator for it. Well, only if it's... But only if it's actually easy to make a simulator for it, for which for the square one was actually the case, surprisingly. Um, yeah, but it, you say that it took you hours to figure out how to do the turn. So it wasn't that easy. Yeah, it wasn't that easy. Just because of the inherent difficulty of making a puzzle simulator, but... Compared to the 3x3, three three, it was actually around as difficult, <laughs> I, I found. So can you... Yeah, but with the 3x3, three three, you said... I can just not go about and solve it because it takes me forever and I normally use my muscle memory. Yeah. But in this case, it's different, right? Even less so for the square one because I actually don't know how to solve it. So, <laughs> yeah. so you can actually practice without muscle memory. So, yeah. Um, the reason why I drew the square one is because cubic stuff is just easier to simulate, I found. And like... A, pyra a pyraminx, a megaminx, and a cube, and, and, and stuff like that will will all turn about this sort of weird axis, and the square one doesn't. So that's the reason that I chose the square one. But yeah, one of the th cool things it can do is shape shift. So here's a cool little example. I turn the right, do a half turn on the top, turn the right again, do a half turn on the top, turn the right again, do a half turn on the top. And now look what happened! <laughs> the equator just flipped. <laughs> and do you know how to get out of that conundrum? Or you just You just back? do it again. <laughs> you just do it again. <laughs> because it flips it, and then you just flip it back. So you do that, 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 that. Slash is gonna do that weird move that turns the right 180 degrees. Um you will turn the top clockwise, shift key will turn the top counterclockwise, D will turn the bottom clockwise, shift D will turn the bottom counterclockwise. And that's actually it. It's way less complicated than a 3x3, three three because there are way less moves. Uh, and you can play it now. It's online. Yeah, the only bug is that it sometimes turns when it shouldn't be able to turn. Like, okay, if I do shift U now, it shouldn't be able to turn, right? There's this corner in the way. Yeah. But I can still turn it, and it does this really weird thing. So, don't go ahead and do that. It'll just do that. <laughs> and then you know you're not in the physical realm. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm gonna, tr I'm gonna try and do something, because I know something about a square one, so I'm gonna... Okay. <sighs> um... I don't know, do this. Wait, no. How about this? No, that's just the same thing. Oops, <laughs> I zoomed out accidentally. Um. Um. <laughs> okay, wait. So that isn't able to turn. That isn't able to turn. That doesn't work. That isn't able to turn. That isn't able to turn. 
That just does the same. I want to, I want to show like this shape-shifting aspect, but I just can't turn it, so, <laughs> um. Do you need to look it up? Square one, uh, shapes. I can read square one notation, so I think this will be fine for me. Uh, this, <laughs> this shape is called a fist. Uh, yeah, this this was the one I one I wanted. Oh, just turn both of them. Oh, okay, yeah, I missed that. Slash three three slash three zero. Slash. Wait, no. Here we go. You got two barrels. <laughs> uh. Wow, this is so awesome. That you can actually, like, imagine that in 3D and implement it. Like, a lot of different shapes. <laughs> like, what makes this hard is that... What makes this hard is that for a while... That, um, yeah, I can shapeshift. <laughs> so... And I had to implement that in the code. Um, because normally I just I just store like where it is in quarter turns, but then I have but now I have this weird twelfth turn mechanic for the square one, which is just completely unfamiliar to me. Um, it's none of the puzzle that I actually know how to solve actually have that sort of thing. Well, except for clock, but that's not even a twisty puzzle. So yeah. <laughs> So how did you understand? How did you come to understand how to do this? How did you figure it out? Do you like imagine it in your head when you're programming? Do you see like a net or? I, I don't, I typically just do some geometry to figure out like the coordinates and everything. And then I just implement so this, that in the code. This stuff? <laughs> you know, this, this, this sort of thing. Or this, but this is something different. This is the, some simpler math that I figured out, yes. Actually, no, this is completely unrelated. This is just my field attempt at calculating how many combinations there are in a square one. So. So you just basically do the math and that's how you figure out. Yeah, just do the math. That's basically it. That's your trick. Um, one thing though. I can't go without doing the parody algorithm. I don't know it. <laughs> this very weird thing. <laughs> this super long algorithm is the parody algorithm. I'm going to try and do it. Okay. And see what shapes it's gonna go in along the way. Okay, we'll see. Slash. Negative three, zero. Slash. Zero, three. Slash. Zero, negative three. Slash. Zero, three. Slash. Two, zero. Slash. Zero, two. 
slash negative two zero slash four zero slash zero negative two. Slash zero positive two. Slash negative one four. Slash oops, slash <laughs> zero negative three. Slash zero three. There we go. Parody algorithm. <laughs> you know what? The equator's flipped. I'm just gonna do the other algorithm that flips the equator just so that it looks nicer. There we go. Now the equator is flipped and only these two edges are swapped. <laughs> it's kind of weird because it's, it's, it's like, this is actually kind of some, the top and bottom layers are actually kind of similar to a three by three. And so it feels weird to me that you can swap two edges. Yeah. <laughs> because you might know on a three by three, you can't, you can't just swap two edges. You have to swap like, you have to like cycle three edges. Um, so yeah, I made a square one simulator that I can't actually use because I don't know how to solve a square one. Um, yeah. And you're not going to learn now with the simulator? You're going to wait until you have a real one? Yeah, it's just going to be easier to learn because then I will not, because, because with a simulator I'll not really build up any muscle memory. Um, and you prefer muscle memory? I just prefer muscle memory. It's kind of required for fast speed, so yeah. Uh, All right, it's a couple of days later now. Um, it's, I, I, it has actually arrived. <laughs> like, by coincidence, like the day that we were about to edit this, it arrived, so. Shape shifts? I just like knew that shape that I made in the video. There, equator flip. Trying stuff. Well, I don't know how to solve a square one, so yet. 